Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome yourselves back to another video. So today, um, I'm going to be reviewing The Weeknd's new album, After Hours. It just dropped. Actually, I'm a little late on this, um, which makes me mad, but I have been anticipating this so much. I am a huge fan of The Weeknd. I, 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 words cannot explain how happy and excited I am for this. So enough talk. I love The Weeknd. If you want to check out my reviews of Blinding Lights and the other songs that released before this album, check them out. Uh, other than that, I'm gonna stop stalling and let's get into the first track, Alone Again. Alright, so I just listened to the first track, Alone Again, and uh, I'm a big fan of this one. I have a lot to say about this one. This was definitely an out intro, opening interlude type track, not really like one you'd hear on the radio. Um, but the piano was sick. Super trippy beat. The beat was really, really good. The bass was so fire, how his, uh, his voice was mixed in with the beat at one point kind of like like his, his voice almost sounded like a synth is what i wrote down super cool synth super cool bass when the bass is like pulsing was like and hits with his voice amazing how the the beat changes again amazing and finally he used autotune which he really doesn't do on a lot of his songs but i really liked that on the song actually i thought able or the weekend sounded really really good with the on this track so really good track um not much to say about it he's really just saying the whole time i don't know how i'm gonna be if i'm alone again um which really sets it up uh, for the album well and uh again is uh too late i'm so excited for the rest of this album the first track's already really good sets it up super well um but yeah too late okay so that was too late um this song i gotta say this first off um this song is a lot more bright. It's a lot more brighter than the song Heartless and the song After Hours. Uh, the beat's definitely a lot more, I don't know, bright, I guess. Um, obviously not as bright as Blinding Lights, but definitely a lot more bright. The harmonizer on his voice and the chorus was so cool how it came in like, ow, 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 ow. that was really, really cool. The beat was really cool as well. I like the perks in the beat. Uh, the beat pro progression on verse two is really good, how it, how it, um, kind of came in and came out and all that that was really cool as well the bridge in the song building up was super good and the pad at the end that de -de -de -de, and then the bass coming in the da, da, and the ending was super good how the beat slow how the beat slowed down and kind of out showed out <clears throat> beat was immaculate um i gotta say i like this song i didn't i it, it kind of feels a lot it, it kind of feels a lot like the same content matter as uh after hours and the same content matter as the song before basically i can't be with this person um <clears throat> that being said i don't dislike this song i would just say i wouldn't give it like a 10 if i had to rate the song i'd probably give it like a 6.5 uh pretty catchy everything about it was really really good to be fair um i'm just saying not nothing really really caught me specifically um but I'm not trashing on it by any means. Just this will probably be one of my least favorite on the albums. And I'll probably love every other, every other song. Uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, hardest to love. Wow. I would give this song a solid 9 out of 10. This song was amazing. I have so much to say about this song. Uh, the opening. So relaxing. Guys, I'm bad with instruments. I'm pretty sure that was a thin synth. So relaxing. Love the opening. Major 80s vibes. I was just chilling and vibing here. I wish I had a camera. You guys could see me. I, I was just swaying in my chair. Just, oh. Uh, it was relaxing. It was good. The beat was relaxing. The chorus was so good and pure. And pure in content. And pure, in my opinion, in its message. The Weeknd was so honest on this song. The, this song and this album so far honestly doesn't sound like the weekend i've heard now granted guys i've not heard all of his discography but what i mean by that is you look at a song like heartless or um uh the song he did with nav uh some way you know they're kind of like sassy kind of like ah like like you you know frick you this that this that right this is so much it's so pure and ah lovely that sounds stupid for me to say but this song was just so soothing it was that's the word i'm looking for um my favorite lyric was i can feel it and then right after in the next verse it says 
I can't feel it anymore. Uh, that was really good. Uh, super trippy outro. I'm not really sure exactly what that was kind of about. It was like the outro was the exact opposite of the tone that the song was. Maybe it's alluding to something. Um, I don't know, but really, really good song. All right, what's going on, guys? So Lucas just joined me, my friend, who's helped me with a lot of reviews before. He's gonna help me review the rest of this album. Obviously, he has not heard Alone Again or Too Late, but that's fine. Those were like, they were good songs, but they were like insane. I loved Hardest to Love, but now Lucas, well, now that Lucas is here, uh, Luke, I want to ask you, what do you think of Hardest to Love? Well, it's one of those songs where the singer <clears throat> gets more personal and talks about his relationship status. I love the song. I felt like the setup was great. I felt like overall instrumental was great as well. And I kind of liked how at the very end, it kind of, uh, at, at the very end, it was kind of like, it, it changed the feel a little bit. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? At the very end of the song, yeah. when the instrumental kind of changes and it kind of goes into something kind of random, it kind of, I feel like it kind of brings it to reality a little bit, kind of like in music videos, you know how sometimes they, once the song ends, the music video continues. You're like yeah, yeah, yeah. Sound. Uh, he he's pretty creative and pretty interesting when it comes to comes to how he ends his songs. Yeah, I felt the song was so catchy though, so catchy. His vocals it, were so good. It was. <laughs> he, uh, he he really is. He he likes to reflect back on a lot of the '90s pop, early 2000s pop. That's kind of it, it, it's pretty cool to see him do that. I mean, a lot of people love that he's going back to that style and it's i mean it's just pretty cool i i think it's great that he's doing that yeah so you're a big fan of this song oh yes okay and uh next song scared to live we've actually heard this one uh we've uh, we've listened to the live performance uh, we're still gonna review this song though um, because the studio always could be a little different and whatnot, and we obviously didn't do a review on the live version. We did a review on Blinding Lights, After Hours, and Heartless, but not on this. Um, so next song, Scared to Live. All right, and Scared to Love. I uh, I am in love scared. with this song, honestly. Or sorry, Scared to Live. Sorry, you got me there. Yeah. Scared to Live. Um, same thing with this song. It's the last song. Uh, very pure, very open, very uh, honest the side of the weekend that we sometimes get but the side that we don't get in a song named heartless or after hours where it's more melancholy um this is a song that could be played at high school dances the aesthetic and setting that i think of most when i listen to the song is a dance party in the show stranger things for some reason that's just what i imagine uh, my favorite my favorite lyric was um uh, shoot, uh, you couldn't go, this is not exactly how it, but you couldn't go to other people because your heart only knows me. I love that. The beat was so good. The soft pad was fire. I like on the bridge how it, he took away the reverb because the song had so much reverb and echo to it, but on the bridge, he took it away and then it slowly came in towards the end. That was really, really cool. Production on the song was amazing. I like the delayed snare. Um, the last don't so tough the run on that was this he did so many runs so tough. And when he said don't in general it was cool because it, it's kind of he kind of almost said like so tough. like he, he formed the word and changed the word so much that um it was so sick um it, the post chorus was cool not a lot of people have post chorus i like that it changed kind of the tone of the song a little bit um, like I said, last run was insane. I give this song 9.5 out of 10. I absolutely love this song. Luke, what do you think about the song? Um, like you said, I love the runs. The runs were incredible. Overall, the whole instrumental, the whole setup as well, was just so, it, it was so perfect. I give this a 10 out, 10 out of 10, right off the bat. <laughs> and Bro, it's, oh. I swear, I, I don't know how he, how he does, does this. I mean, bro, when I'm practicing runs, that one right there, it would take so long to nail it just right. And we know he could do it live, too. He has... He did it live. He has unbelievable talent. We he watched it live. Unbelievable talent. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the... I forgot. I watched the yeah. live version, too. Oh. He, did, he did pretty good. I'm, I actually don't remember much about the live version. It was pretty bro, similar. I, yeah. I know he can do this stuff live, so I know I've, I've heard him do runs like this live. And, and the... Bro, this... After this concert... No, after the, after this um, album... Bro. Shoot. 
Oh, cut, cut that part out when I started saying after. Okay. <clears throat> Keep going. Hold on, hold on. Let me Bro, clap so I know. I have a feeling that they're going to be... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let me clap. So far, me... Stop, 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 stop. Let me clap so I know yeah. where to cut it. All right, go ahead. So what I've seen is... Oh, shoot. All right, start it over. Not the whole thing, but just... All right, let me clap and then go. Okay, go. <laughs> okay, so... I really think that after this record, charts and stuff, and it'll probably go number one. Oh yeah. It, he's already so big now. It will only make him more massive. <laughs> it's. I feel like this is his best record so far from what I've heard. This I song. This is his best record. Yeah. Or the album. No, so far from what I've heard. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the crazy part. This song might be okay compared to the rest of the songs in this album. Like, we might find some songs that are 10 times better. Might, might. That's the crazy part. Uh, yeah, we, we both love this song. Any final thoughts about this song before we go into Snow Child? No, no, everything was great. And cool thing about Snow Child, I'm looking at the lyrics. Why? I'm not reading the lyrics, but I'm looking at the arrangement of the lyrics. I think this is a rap song, a more of a rap song. So I'm actually excited for that as well oh, no. because I am really no. liking this 80s pop he's doing. But a switch would be really, really cool. Anyways, the weekend this album already is insane. Next song, Snow Child. It, he's not a part of our generation, but as the most suicidal, I think we we could all agree that my generation is the most suicidal generation. Um, it's really we can all re, we can all relate. I, I I'm not suicidal. I do not feel I'm not that way at all actually, but a lot of us can relate to him and his feelings and I'm not really I, I'm pretty happy that he ha, that he put his feelings on paper because it normally like what is what it's done with with me like when I've been angry put my thoughts down on paper I write songs and stuff so it normally re relieves the tension so I, all, I, all I really do is all, all I do is that and I kind of feel better right away and I hope it's the same way for him. I hope it still doesn't feel this way. His life can be hard, pressured, yeah, all the normal stuff that goes on. But yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad he put his feelings on the paper. Overall, it was a great song as well, mm. instrumental wise. And we, we have to. We expected that, and <clears throat> yeah, he was right on cue with the instrumental. Amazing. Yeah, the uh, the uh, production with Abel is always good. Um, yeah. I'm yes. not a huge fan of this song. Um, the content matter, I am a big fan of. Um, I like what he's talking about. I do kind of like the uh, preach, well not preach, but the uh, kind of pouring his heart out slash vibe this song gives. I'm not a big fan of his flow though. I, I don't like his flow in the verses. Now the chorus was. You thought really this sick. was going to be a rap song too. Is it, true, true, you. and and I, it, yes, but at the same time, I you could say this this well this wasn't a rap song, but point is I don't like his flow. I don't really like his flows. There was an auto tune on his voice, which I'm not saying he can't use auto tune because he doesn't need auto tune. So he all used he obviously used auto tune as a an uh, effect, but I didn't really like it. Um, the chorus is super nice though. I really like this the. AD sounds again in the chorus. Um, I like the phobic line. The only thing I'm, I'm phobic to is, is falling. Um, but the riser was really cool. The and the synth, like the the sounds and the vocals in the chorus, I actually really liked. Versus, not a big fan of. So you know, not huge on the song. I'd come back to it. Um, but it's also hard if we're comparing it to Scared uh, Scared to Live and uh, the yeah. other one. Um, but no, I like this song. Just not a huge fan of the verses. Um, next song, Escape from L.A. And with this one, it is produced by, by, by Metro Boomin. So this, I think, will be a rap flowing one. And the reason I want a rap flowing one from the weekend is because, yes, he's good at this 80s stuff. He's good at belting notes. He's good at the singing. But he's also really good at, like, swaggy. Y'all have heard Starboy, okay? I'm hoping the song is similar to that or whatever. If it's not, if it's not rap, I'm not just going to say it's trash. But I'm hoping we get that style. Uh, Escape from oh, LA. Yeah. Okay, Escape from LA. Um, a lot of things about this song as well. First of all, because it's freaking five minutes. Straight off the bat. Beat, really, really good. Sean, it's six minutes. 
Oh, uh, sorry, six, well, it's, uh, yeah, you're right. My bad, my bad, okay, it's six minutes. Long song, that's the point, right? That's the point we're both trying to get at. It's a long song. Oh, I yes. love the slow opening, the super trippy opening. This song is so trippy. Um, the extra hi-hats at the beginning were dope. How it was kind of like, for a second, that was really cool. Um, I don't know if you noticed this, Lucas, but I was a big fan. You know when he said, uh, okay, so he said, when you say that you need space i give you space you remember that part and you notice yes. okay well when he he did the ad lib you space it was like this super like reverb induced vocal and it and it went on the left side of my headphones that was so yes, sick yes i and, know and it, it's fine yeah and space you know means space in the vocal was very very spacey so that was super cool um kind of like a you know like a really cool trick they did um i love his chill voice tone his voice tone on this album so far has i i feel i feel like kind of been sort of one note this sounds a lot uh, different well not a lot different but i feel like his voice tone in this is no, is the, is at least a little bit different second chorus was super dope as well super trippy i love how the second chorus goes with the slow opening kind of like it sounds like it's slowed down but it's actually not love the dreamy chorus with the slow, slower beat like i just said um first part of bridge not big fan of second part of the bridge was really cool first of all he's very specific um the la girls part was really really catchy at, at this point when you're famous like he is it is so hard to find out who you can trust it is so hard and there are so many cold people out in the world when you trust the wrong people it can leave you even more heartbroken than if if, <laughs> if you go with someone you know it's out after a while it, it, it tends to be the opposite but when you're at the very beginning of your fame and at the very height of your fame and you get to that place pretty quick pretty quickly <clears throat> then you're not really you used to everyone okay everyone likes me and stuff but when you get your heart broken by someone you don't know, it, it, it can be pretty it can be pretty hard. And I see how he's expressing his feelings here. It's hard it's hard to hard to trust people. That it's hard to trust people when when you get famous and everyone knows you. Someone thinks you're a god. Some people will try to take advantage of your talents, yeah. take advantage of you. So I like that he mentions that in the song, and because that's very real, very real. Yeah. Uh, any final thoughts about the song? No, I think. What do you think I about think the vocals, spoken. the vibe, the beat, all that kind of stuff? Overall, overall, the vocals, like you said, it, he mainly goes for one like little little area in his vocal range. And yeah. so far, we've seen that in Blinding Lights, a After Hours, After Hours is more falsetto than all the other songs, but mm -hmm. still same same range. And we've seen that throughout. That's the one thing that's kind of. The one thing I'm like, okay, Abel, you can change it up a little bit. Yeah, but I agree. It's, it's not yeah. terrible. It's just like it would be kind of cool if he switched it a little bit. Um, what would you give the song one out of ten? I want to see. I give the song a ten out of ten. You get really? 10 out of 10. I give them all a ten out of ten right now. Yeah, every mm -hmm. song on this record I've listened to so far is a ten out of ten, and it'll be the first time that <clears> any <throat> record would ever be a ten out of ten for me because, I mean. Yeah, this if is, it doesn't this is... change, I think it might. If, if the vocal range doesn't change, I think it might affect Nine. my rating. Yeah, I mean but... this is really good so far, and and the best part is is like yeah. if we're reviewing this, including Blinding Lights and After Hours, like all the other songs could be bad, and it still would be an amazing record because of the songs we've heard and because of After Hours and Blinding Lights. But anyways, uh, next song, Faith, uh, same producer, Metro Boom, Metro Boomin. I love Metro Boomin. Uh, next song faith let's get into it and i wrote i read i know this is kind of like cheating but i read um it gives a description what the song is about stop um, cheating stop. sorry this song is about religion so this will be interesting uh faith this is a pretty relatable top topic a lot of the songs so far have been relatable on this album and what, from what i'm seeing right now it's more like why is god allowing all this stuff to happen it's, it's really helping me it, it's really not helping me with my faith making me think why why would why would there be a god that would allow this all this bad stuff to happen and he shares the struggle uh, in life hey, yo, in the song and he's like i'm losing my faith and it's, it's hurt, I'm losing my religion and he's not going to any specific god 
at this point he's saying he's taking God God there God there and putting them in there whatever God is is there for him or which, whichever one he believes in I I'm Christian so I'm automatically gonna go with Jesus but um here he's like how could there be a God that allows all this stuff to happen it's really hurting my belief in God and this is a very relatable because that question why would God allow all this stuff to happen is what really decides whether or not someone has a faith whether whether or not they have a faith or not that's really what decides it and I have not heard a song I mean I've heard R.E.M.'s version of Lose My Religion it's yeah. there's that but I'm I've not heard a song like this in a while, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this a 10 out of 10. From a secular because, artist, you haven't heard this in a while, obviously. <laughs> yeah, it's. I always, I always love God, Jesus, and all yeah. that. And so I really it, like sometimes your. Sometimes it's just His will and stuff. I it's really like, like your. Will. Sorry, sorry. I really like your take yeah. on the lyrics and subject matter, and all of that. But um. What are some quick thoughts on the vocals? The production, I, I'm not gonna say what I think about it, but there was a lot of production, the beat, and the yes. catchiness, the chorus. What do you think about all that kind of stuff? So, when I talk about that, it's automatically gonna be good because it's able. It's able, right? And all that, Tesfe. And it's automatically because it's the weekend, you know, you know they're gonna have great production. You know, yeah. it's gonna be great vocals. And these harmonies, <clears throat> I thought, my. My, the harmonies were my favorite in this song. They were it. Oh. They were my favorite. They were so soothing. Like I did not. I know. You know he's a live, live artist, and yeah. I'm like, who's gonna do all these harmonies and stuff? But in the meantime, it was it was so satisfying. Like I don't even know it. I don't even have words for it though. Like I yeah. get so far. Yeah, this, this is my favorite weekend album. This is the weekend album. Yeah, it's it's really my favorite so far. Yeah, um, man, I love that. So the song too. Um, I love the piano and the fading bells at the beginning. The beat is yes. so so good. The kick and then the snare. I love that as well. The post chorus with all the effects called the harmonizer. It wasn't actually him harmonizing. On the post chorus, uh, obviously he yes. did, but but you know what I'm talking about, where, where it's kind of like vocal effect, yeah, where it's like dumbed down. Yeah. yeah, that wasn't obviously actually him, but the production. That's why I said production. Yes, his production is always good, but on this song, honestly, it was a, it was extra crazy. Uh, yeah, the effects and the harmonizer on the voice verse, uh, sorry, bridge were insane, and I felt like this song was him, like you say, kind of reaching out. Yeah, you're not yeah. i don't think really talking about a specific god but maybe to the universe in general a bigger power in general why do these things happen to me um and you know he's kind of saying well i'd kind of rather the dr the drugs over faith you know saying how yeah, he in yeah. the chorus how his body feels best when he takes the cocaine the molly instead of that at art not instead of that all that stuff instead of having faith in something in himself and the people around him and stuff like that and then the outro hold oh, oh my now we both talked about the harmonizer but before the outro and during the outro the sirens and all of that like it it, it it sounded like you were in the alone in vegas just by yourself or la or a big city and you just hear everything happening you just hear everything happening and then the harmonizer comes in makes it 10 times better first of all the lyrics also were sick because it was talking about to me it seemed as him talking about in the song yo like yeah i i, I don't care about faith or not i don't care about faith but i'm choosing drugs over faith and then the outro is well this would happen i'm in a cop car my life has turned out like this all these things this song is perfect i i, I love this song so much now i do have to say <clears throat> i'd probably listen to scared to love over i'm oh, sorry scared to live over this um like if i'm just trying to like chill or whatever because this is kind of like a certain song i have to be in a certain mood in if, if, if you know what i'm saying that doesn't take away yes. from my 10 out of 10 but scared to live is more of a normal song this one isn't so normal which is part of why it gets a 10 out of 10 but amazing song amazing song this album is insane amazing so song. far next song in your eyes uh by the weekend oh and real quick um 
I would like to say that in your eyes comes after blinding lights. We love blinding lights. 10 out of 10 as well. Insane song. Forgot to talk about Heartless before Faith. Love that song as well. I give that song probably an 8.5 out of 10. Um, love, but blinding lights, me and Luke both have loved so much. So, um, in your eyes. Okay, so in your eyes. Oh, <laughs> 10 out of 10. Again, the, oh my freaking, oh, wow. So, very 80s pop. Uh, Michael Jackson wow, came to mind. A lot of Michael Jackson uh, vibes from this one. Uh, the post course, post course is so fire, so catchy. It's a good song after Blinding Lights, uh, kind of similar to Blinding Lights. I'll get to why I think it's a good song after Blinding Lights in a second. Um, he's trying to be blind to the reality because of love. Relatable. Um, but look, the saxophone at the end. <laughs> What oh the my God. What the, bro, I was like freaking, okay, Michael he Jackson vibes. I was like, okay, Michael Jackson vibes, right? And then the saxophone comes yes. in. That switched it up for me. And then uh, I like how he said, you lie, but it don't define you. That's cool because it, it's it's true. I mean, it's true and it's not true. You got to be wary, but it also doesn't define someone. It's cool that he can like separate that. I don't know. I thought that was cool. Um, and then the saxophone in the in the like outro like it became like a freaking dance track like I, I i i'm blown away because this is different a lot different than faith um except for the 80s kind of even no faith doesn't really have like any uh, point is it's this doesn't sound like a lot like every other track on the album and i this song again is is amazing uh, my favorite's probably still faith but i i i, I um it's, it's a cool concept, which I'm sure people have done before. Not saying it's original or even unique, but uh, The Weeknd kind of talking about how he is hiding that you're a liar and stuff like that because of love is something I have not seen from The Weeknd that much. It's usually you're a liar, so I'm not going to love you. Um, I don't know. Luke, what do you think about the song? Well, it just, you took all the words out of my mouth, man. Everything you were going to say. It was word for word. The saxophone was amazing. Overall, topic was great. I, I, I feel like blind love is it's really, when people are first in love or think they're in love, it it's really makes everything else seem unimportant, like not important at all. And it's, uh, I, I'm so, it, it's like everything is relatable. Everything is relatable here. And that's why I, I feel like this album will get a lot of great reception and everyone's gonna really accept this album i think because yeah. it's it really touches a lot of my generation and past generations as well it's about every generation and overall the instrumental is great too and this is a different song than what from the rest of the album that's true it does sound different. i mean i see the vibe you're talking about with um with the blinding lights, but I did not think this song is like blinding lights at all. Maybe time period, but besides that, not really. Yeah. Um, but overall, I really did like the song. I like the topic of the song. I felt like it was all planned out. Pretty great. Pretty perfect. It's mix. cool coming after blinding lights because blinding lights is like him. Like, uh, I don't know. It's almost like a continuation of that song, I guess. Like he's blinded in, in, in love with this girl. And then he's kind of admitting. Like, okay. You talk about that. Yes. Yes. And then he's kind of admitting, like, uh, I kind of see it, but too bad. I'm gonna, whatever. And then, look, the next song name, Save Your Tears, maybe this is him getting all sassy again and not so happy vibe like that last song and saying, well, too bad I'm breaking up with you. Let's see. Save Your Tears. I swear, if this is 10 out of 10, too, uh, I want one bad song, okay? This is too good. <laughs> no, I'm playing. I think I'm gonna rank this one not, um, 8 out of 10. Okay. I think I'm going with that right off the bat. The instrumental was one thing that bothered me. Overall, we've seen so many great instrumentals from from the weekends, especially <clears throat> on this album. But right now, the instrumental on this one was just not. I like the production, but the instrumental just bothered me. Okay. It really, it really, it just bothered me. Why the so? message was good, which is why I give this the three three stars on this and. Overall, I thought vocals were pretty well as well. Well, pretty good as well. So that's where I added five to that as well. So eight, I give this an eight out of ten. 
Okay, why don't you like the instrumental? I don't know, it's just, it doesn't seem to really <laughs> relate with the album in general. The album really goes with one kind of feel. And when you have too much of that, it kind of takes it away a little bit. You can, you mm. can be, I mean, you can have artists that do all kinds of different music on one album. But when you do, it, it, this just seems way different than everything else he's done. Mm, okay. Everything else he's done in this album. Which um, that could be different, could be good, or could, be, could be bad. This isn't the original, but this is just different. And it's not really, I don't really see this as fitting for this album. Um, I gotta disagree with you. I do actually like the vibe of this. Like, I felt like it actually went pretty well with the song, or uh, with the album. I give it, like, an 8.7 out of 10. Like, not my favorite favorite. Um, but I did actually like the song a lot, a lot. Um, you talk about what she should have done. Uh, kind of. The, uh, the song before this was kind of like, um, you know, like, him blind to it. And now he's kind of like, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm not blind to it anymore. You broke my heart. Frick you, retard. Um, the chorus, okay. the chorus voice effect was super dope. Kind of near the end of the chorus, it sounded really, really bright with all the effects they put on it. I love the claps. The beat was super sick. Um, Save Your Tears part was vibing to that. Um, like I said, like how it's, so it was so bright. So, not my favorite song on the album. I would say if anything was to be a filler, this probably is. Um, but it's not a bad filler. Even Luke still gave it an 8, which is not bad by any means. Um felt a little too similar at times to the other songs um especially the super 80s pop whatever ones but um not a bad song and i do really like the chorus uh the message and certain parts of the song um so you know i give it an 8.7 out of 10 uh we have two more songs luke two more songs um interlude sounds like highly vocal ones or sounds like really highly highly vocal belting song i'm hoping for and then until i bleed out and with that name until i bleed out i would assume it is probably going to have that kind of style as well after hours we love that song a lot i believe we gave it 9 out of 10 uh did a review on that check that out but we love love that song so um repeat after me interlude okay so repeat after me interlude um Let's see. I I like this one. I would not give it a 10 out of 10 for sure. Um, I'd say I'd probably give it an 8 out of 10 to 8.5. Uh, still a really good song. Um, uh, super cool beat. Super vibey and spacey. I really like that. Um, the concept reminds me of Cheating on You by Charlie Puth, except from the um, kind of like the other uh, perspective. Um, him trying to trick a girl that the girl still loves him kind of like trying to be like repeat after me like you still love me if you know him kind of trick himself um that the girl still loves him uh kind of what uh or this is kind of him trying to trick himself like brainwash and all that and then it feels i feel like after hours is kind of like a continuation of it's kind of like a continuation of that of him kind of saying um kind of saying like well this is what's gonna happen if you're not with me so i like it for that aspect um it was it was pretty catchy and vibey and all of that <laughs> um but uh no what do you think about the song look first of all sean it's not no you were totally wrong sean i did not think this has anything to do with brainwashing sean it's it's literally so She's just screwing another guy out of spites because of an argument, it seems like here. It literally says in the words, you were screwing him, but in a more <laughs> colorful tone, color, more colorful words, you were screwing him out of spite of me. And it's, it's not brainwashing. Okay. But he knows, sometimes girls, what they do, they, they tend to feel, they, they can feel guilty after having having sex and especially it's when they're mad at, mad at their exes and stuff, they can kind of feel guilty, just not totally ready yet to be away from that person. And that's basically what he's saying here. He's like, I, I know, I know that's how you're going to, that's how it's going to be. And Sean, he could be talking about a totally different girl, because you know, 
you know, very popular people can be very good around the ladies here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bro. It's... I don't think it's brainwashing. I feel like after hours, he, he's probably talking about a different girl. I do not think he's talking about the same person. Well, I didn't but, say... Yeah, I didn't say that, but I don't know. Yeah. It just seems like... He's saying something that... He's saying the, um... He's talking about something that normally happens to girls. Unless you're just, like... <laughs> unless you're just really mean and just, like, rude people just to hurt people's feelings even after... Even if you're dating them. Yeah. It's, what do you feel about the song? Overall, the song... I like the... The, the topic... The topic is something that we... Not a lot of girls... Not a lot of people like to talk about. Yeah. And... It's... Normally... A lot of people get pretty mad when <laughs> when you start to talk about this because it normally goes into an argument like, oh wait, no, that's not how you, you misunderstand. But it's once the people realize what they've done, they try to cover it up. It's one of those topics that you have to be really careful about because a lot of people are like, oh wait, I, they're, they're kind of in a denial stage when it comes to that. They're kind of like, oh wait, why is he? He's talking about this, but this isn't true, but they know deep inside that that's actually how it is in their life. And they're like, this is, I actually did do this, and they just don't want to admit it. And a lot of people can be pr pretty prideful when it comes to that, in terms of this topic. But I'm glad he touched on it. Yeah. I'm very so, glad he touched on it. So, what would you give this song 1 out of 10? i give this, i give this a 10 out of 10. Hmm, okay. Um, any final thoughts before we go to the last song? <clears throat> No. Last song, uh, Until It Bleed Out. Now, here's one thing, just one thing I have to say about the song. I, I, This has to be very good. For a closing song on a very good album, I, I have ex big expectations for this one. Uh, the Weekend, Until I Bleed Out. The, I said I had big, big expectations for this one. Um, they, This song sucks. No, I'm absolutely kidding. This song... Okay, Sean, you're gay. I'm kidding. It's no. This song was absolutely amazing. His vocals are the best on the song. They were on the whole album. Actually, then again, uh, they're pretty good on Scared to Live as well. Or not pretty good, very good on Scared to Live. Um, but, oh, wow. The chorus was, oh my. Dude, I uh, I like how the opening of the song rises. It's like, and then stops abruptly. Kind of like, it really sets the tone for the song. Um... His high notes on the chorus were, um, oh, they were amazing. How he went, I want to cut you out of my, and then he totally raises it. And he raises the note so high that it's almost like it mixes in with the beat. Um, I, I, oh my gosh. His runs, they were insane as well. Um, especially on on i believe on the second time he says i want to cut you out of my dreams um i like how the the beat like kept adding like kind of random really random cool effects within kind of like not necessarily distract you from the vocal but kind of add like a just a i don't know how to explain it but it added a cool vibe to it i i really really like this song as well um and man uh, you know what i'm a I'd have to give this one a, a 9.5 out of 10. Only reason it's not a 10 out of 10. It, it really is a 10 out of 10. Then just but, say it's a 10 out of 10, Sean. Yeah, it's, it, uh, everything is perfect about it. I just tend to like songs with normal structure better than like uh, than like interludes or whatever. And that's just like a personal gripe. But as the, so, so, so for me, 9.5, but as far as songs concerned, 10 out of 10. So it's a 10 out of 10. What do you think, Luke? I'm just like, uh, I can't believe you said it wasn't a 10 out of 10. I thought you were going to go into it and be like, oh yeah, 10 out of 10. This is a 10 out of 10 for me. Okay, 9.5 is so close. It's a 10 out of 10, Luke. Okay, just, 10 out of 10. Just say it. Just say it. Sorry, Sean. give your opinion. Give your opinion. You have nothing negative to say about the song. So... It's really, once again, I like that, like I said in, the, in one of the other songs, I forgot which one it was, he puts his emotion down on, down on paper and he writes a song about his anger. And like I said before, 
it helps relieve relieve all the tension. And he, in this song here, it's it's just absolutely it's absolutely fire. The way the production is great. Overall, it's simple lyrics, but voc vocals are great. I feel like the lyrics really fit. They really w were well well written for this song. They're not great lyrics, but they fit the song. And oh, bro, it, it's just, it's just very catchy. Very catchy. You think this is a good ending song? Yes, I do think this is a good ending yeah. song. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and give uh, what I think about the album as a whole, and then Lucas yeah. will as well, and then we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Um, yeah, th this was really a very very good album. Um, one of my favorite albums I've ever listened to, uh, or slash reviewed, and maybe the, but it's it's hard to tell yeah. first listen, right? Um, I might like songs that I gave an eight better than the ones I gave tens. I don't know. But I gave so many 10 out of 10s in this in this album that it, it's it's insane. I gave uh, Blinding Lights 10 out of 10, After Hours 10 out of 10, um, uh, Hardest to Love 10 out of 10, Scared to Live 10 out of 10, uh, Faith 10 out of 10, um, In Your Eyes 10 out of 10, Until I Bleed Out 10 out of 10. Like I've never given an album that many 10 out of 10s, and nothing in my opinion is below an eight. So, uh, this album is good. I mean, and, and like Luke was just saying, it has substance to it. Not every song sounds the same. It has like an 80s theme to it. But if you listen to Heartless, that's very rap and R&B. You listen to Faith, it doesn't have too much 80s in my opinion. It's more of like a R&B, super vibey, psychedelic song. Um, you listen to I until i bleed out same thing with that not super 80s so it's a bunch of 80s and a bunch of like i don't know exactly hey, very poppy as well sean very, very poppy yes well. very poppy but not normal like freaking justin bieber ariana grande type pop you know what i mean more psychedelic i guess is the word for it because it's so trippy the sounds are really trippy and all that his vocals are really trippy i don't know the vocals were insane i've definitely seen better vocals from him on some actually no that's not true um I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know. I've seen different vocals of vocal effects he's done, like where he's gone deeper and stuff like that on other albums, and where I have seen him hit higher notes. I do think, even then, like until I bleed out, but the runs on this album were insane. I have not seen him do these good of runs. Um, I have not seen him do that much this much 80s stuff as well before. Pretty light on the rap. I would have liked maybe one or two more rap type songs. Um different fan uh, different types of fans of the weekend come for different things i honestly come for all of his music because i like all of his music his rap r&b and then also his 80s pop and all that kind of stuff um i really like the song heartless that's like the only kind of rap song in this song on this album and that's a really good song i would have appreciated maybe one or two more of those um other than that i have i have absolutely no gripes with this album um i guess other than like like it like repeat after me and snow child i wasn't huge fans of but even those were sevens um those but but snow child had such good deep lyrics that it's like that loki was kind of like an eight so i don't know um i'm gonna let lucas talk but uh, nine out of ten i actually think i'm not gonna rate it because because that's really hard um my rating could definitely change over time as it could with any album oh, yeah. But, uh, uh, it, it, either way, very, very good album. And I'll, I'll say this out of 14 tracks, I, uh, I'd listen to them all again, but I like real, like I, I really want to listen to, I'd say 11 to 12 of them again. That's like two. I'm not a huge fan of, but I still like, so this is amazing album, amazing album. I love it. It, it the weekend i is such a big inspiration of mine especially after this like i insane lucas what do you think so overall like i said before this is going to be very well very accepted it's overall it's it, it's very relatable very relatable every song on here is 
on is, is production, at, at least pretty decent songwriting, and overall, it reaches just just, just about every crowd. Not not like you look at music genre wise, no, but you look at lyric wise and message wise, yes. I feel like this will be very well. This will be taken in very well, and a lot of people will love this album. That's really all I have to say, but that because I mean, it literally touches all, all the points in relationships, and that's what pe- a lot. That's what a lot of people, my generation, need to hear, and even even in Generation X, that's what they need to hear as well. And I'm glad he points that out there. Glad I'm glad he put this album out there to. I, I really think he also did this to help help out my generation and Generation X. I'm, I'm saying generations a lot, but well, and because it's, it's what he's going through and stuff like that. Exactly, you know? that's exactly what. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. I gotta ask you. I'm not gonna give a rating. If do you want to give a rating, one out of ten. I give this al- album a ten out of ten. Even though I rated one of the songs eight out of ten, I've never. This album was incredible. It's you got incredible. a favorite song? Um, I have. I would have to say After Hours. After Hours. Um, it's hard. I don't. I mean, I think actually Blinding Lights probably would have been my favorite song if I hadn't like heard the song previous listening to this album. It's not like I've worn it out or anything, but favorite song as of like this listen. Hmm. I'd have to say Faith. I think I praise that one the most. I think I praise Faith the most. Um, it's, 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 it's too hard to tell. Right now, though, Faith. Um, my least favorite song? Snow Child. What's your least favorite song? My least favorite song? What was the one I rated? Sa- I Save Your Tears. Save Your Tears. Save Your Tears was the one I rated. That, that one right there. The one that you said didn't fit. Yeah. Anyways, we've been going for a while. This is probably like an hour long or some crap. Honestly, I don't think I don't even think anybody's really gonna watch this. But I'm gonna have fun looking back at this. I'm not gonna lie. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Check out Lucas's channel. Uh, link in the description. He's a bunch of, does, does, oh shoot, I cannot talk. Does a bunch of sports stuff. Um, he's gonna be releasing a podcast about sports tomorrow. So uh, yeah. Oh and oh, f- and finally, sorry, I can't. He didn't hear the first two songs. So so maybe this album would go a little lower or 10 times higher once he listens to those. I don't know. I'm interested to see because those were no, good I songs as well. Get, I don't think it could get any higher than 10. That's true. I don't know um, if could do that. Maybe, maybe it could look, get lower. I don't know. I'm interested to see what he thinks about those songs. I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching uh, The weekend. Amazing. Goodbye.